be known by the company we keep, by the ones who circle round to tend these fires. We shall be known by the ones who sow and reap the seeds of change from deep within the earth. It is time now, it is time now that we thrive. It is time we lead ourselves into the well. It is time now, and what a time to be alive in this great turning we shall learn to lead in love. In this great turning we shall learn to lead in love. Indeed, my friends, and good morning. <clears throat> Good morning, good morning, good morning to you. Good morning, good morning. And how do you do? How are you feeling? <coughs> good morning to Ashraf. Good morning, Sophia. Good morning to Vanny. Good morning, Angela. Good morning, Pradeep. Good morning to Ken. Good morning to Jake. Good morning, Sandy. Good morning, good morning, good morning to you. Good morning, good morning. And how do you do? Yeah, how are you feeling today? The same as how do you do? How are you feeling? Today is a gorgeous sunny day. We like to talk about the weather each day. Some of us turn on the news and we look at the weather each morning so that we know how to dress for the day. Which clothes to wear? Do we need a coat? Do we need an umbrella? Well, today's a nice sunny day and the weather is going to get warmer. So when I go out for my walk or maybe even a bike ride, I know I don't need a raincoat. I don't need rain boots. Maybe just a nice light summer or spring jacket for this kind of a day. Look at this gorgeous painting I have. Looks familiar to you. This is the wonderful country we live in, Canada. And this painting was, <clears throat> it's called Our Home and Native Land. And it was created by Jennifer Odomiet from Smithers, BC. And I'd like to begin by acknowledging, of course, the Indigenous people who were the first people on our land. First Nation, Métis, and Inuit. I'd like to begin by acknowledging that we are hosted on the land of the Mississaugas of the Anishinaabe, the Haudenosaunee Confederacy, and the Wendat. And here at Lake Simcoe, where I live, I walk the sacred land of the Chippewa and Ojibwe. We also recognize the enduring presence of all First Nation, Métis, and Inuit people. <clears throat> so that's our land acknowledgement. Oops, there we go. Let me get my drum back out because I love the sound of this drum. Thank you for this day, Stu. Thank you for this day. Thank you for this day, students. Thank you for this day. This beautiful, wonderful, glorious day. This beautiful, wonderful, glorious day. Thank you for this day, students. Thank you for this day. Thank you for this day, students. Thank you for this day. This beautiful, wonderful, glorious day. This beautiful, wonderful, glorious day. It's a wonderful day. And you know, I don't think for a couple days it's going to rain. So it'll be nice to get outside on your bike, your skateboard, play some basketball, go for a walk, go to the park. Just keep your distance from everyone. You still have to keep your distance, and I think you still have to wear your mask, even if you're at the park. If all 
all of the raindrops were lemon drops and gum drops. Oh, what a world this would be. Indeed, if all the rain that we saw outside was lemon drops, gum, chocolate bars, sweet candies, the whole world would be sweet. Wouldn't that be nice? It's fun just to think about these things, like having a world that is all sweet, or another way of saying it is having a world that lives in peace. If all of the raindrops were lemon drops and gum drops, oh, what a world this would be. You notice Miss Coulterman is smiling. And I think smiling is important because <clears throat> when you smile a lot to other people and they smile back at you, it makes you feel good inside. You start to feel more whole. It isn't any trouble just to S-M-I-L-E. It isn't any trouble just to S-M-I-L-E. So if you're feeling troubled, it will vanish like a bubble. If you only take the trouble just to S-M-I-L-E. While we're spelling things. Farmer Brown, he had a dog. Bingo was his name, oh, B-I-N-G-O, 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 and Bingo was his name. Oh, let's try to speed that up a little bit. Let's go a little faster. Farmer Brown, he had a dog. Bingo was his name, oh, about a happiness song and it runs in a circular motion a circle it goes round and round happiness runs in a circular motion happiness runs in a circular way happiness runs in a circular motion happiness runs in a circular clap your hands. If you're happy and you know it, clap your hands. If you're happy and you know it, your face will surely show it. If you're happy and you know it, clap your hands. If you're happy and you know it, stomp your feet. If you're happy and you know it, stomp your feet. If you're happy and you know it, your face will surely show it. If you're happy and you know it, stomp your feet. If you're happy and you know it, shout hooray, hooray. If you're happy and you know it, shout hooray, hooray. If you're happy and you know it, your face will surely show it. If you're happy and you know it, shout hooray, hooray. Let's do all three. Oh no, shout hooray. If you're happy and you know it, do all three. Hooray. If you're happy and you know it, do all three. Hooray! If you're happy and you know it, your face will surely show it. If you're happy and you know it, do all three. Hooray! That was my sequence today, my friends. First clap, then tap your feet, then say hooray. That's a sequence. That's the order of how I did it. Clap, stamp, Hooray. We'll talk some more about sequencing this week. Um, oh, let's go back to the drum for this one because I love singing about Canada. This land is your land. This land is my land. From Bonavista to Vancouver Island. From the Arctic Circle to the Great Lake Waters. This land was made for you and me. I love it. I'm going to show you <clears throat> a picture of Canada once again. And that song spoke about, <clears throat> excuse me, to the far east of Canada, 
we have Bonavista. To the far west of Canada, we have Vancouver Island. To the far north, we have the Arctic Circle, where the Arctic Ocean is. And around where we live to the south, we have the Great Lakes. And we live along the side. Most of you live in Toronto, and you live along <clears throat> the side of Lake Ontario. I'm sorry. I need to take a break here for my water There we go, you have a sip also. <clears throat> have a lot of water all day. In fact, I have my water bottle beside me all day long. When I'm online with you for virtual classes, when I'm here in this video, when I'm sitting at my desk, when I go for a walk, if I go for a bike ride or a, <clears throat> a kayak ride out on the water, I take my water everywhere with me. And I think you should also. Okay, I'm in the mood for clapping. Hey, how about you? I'm in the mood for clapping. Hey, how about you? I'm in the mood for clapping, clapping along with you. Hey, hey, what do you say? I'm in the mood for that today. Hey, hey, what do you say? I'm in the mood for that. Let's stretch your arms a little bit. Oh, I'm gonna roll my arms. I'm in the mood for rolling. Hey, how about you? I'm in the mood for rolling. Hey, how about you? I'm in the mood for rolling, rolling along with you. Hey, hey, what do you say? I'm in the mood for that today. Hey, hey, what do you say? I'm in the mood for that. Let's roll your hands in front. <clears throat> I'm in the mood for rolling. Hey, how about you? I'm in the mood for rolling. Hey, how about you? I'm in the mood for rolling, rolling along with you. Hey, hey, what do you say? I'm in the mood for that today. Hey, hey, what do you say? I'm in the mood for that. Tap your legs. I'm in the mood for tapping. Hey, how about you? I'm in the mood for tapping. Hey, how about you? I'm in the mood for tapping, tapping along with you. Hey, hey, what do you say? I'm in the mood for that today. Hey, hey, what do you say? I'm in the mood for that. Terrific. Let's do the numbers rumba. Let's do the numbers rumba. Let's do the numbers rumba. Numbers, numbers all day long. Let's do a couple of numbers. <coughs> number seven are the numbers, the, the number of days in one week. Seven days in one week. Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Good for you. Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. So <clears throat> seven days in a week. Let's do the numbers rumba. Let's do the numbers rumba. Let's do the numbers rumba. Numbers, numbers all day long. Here we go. Number 12, which is exactly the same as a dozen, like a dozen eggs, a dozen bagels, a dozen pop in a case of pop, a dozen roses, when you buy flowers, they often come in a dozen. A dozen donuts at Tim Hortons. A dozen is the same as number 12. And there are 12 months of the year. January, February, March, and April, May, June, July, and August, September, October, 
November, December, these are the months of the year. There are 12, a dozen. <clears throat> Let's do the numbers, rumba. Let's do the numbers, rumba. Let's do the numbers, rumba. Numbers, numbers all day long. We are so lucky that we have fingers that we can count with when we're doing. I still count with my fingers. When I'm at the grocery store and I'm adding up some things that I need, I'm still counting on my fingers. How many fingers on one hand? Five. How many fingers on the other hand? Awesome. We often give a high five to someone in the days when we could touch our friends, when we weren't distancing. We could do a high five. So five is handy when you're counting. Or if you put five on one hand together with another hand, you've got 10 fingers. One little, two little, three little fingers, four little, five little, six little fingers. Seven little, eight little, nine little fingers, ten little fingers here. Another thing that's kind of handy with counting on your hands is you can skip count. For example, five, ten. And then you can think by adding five more, you've got fifteen, twenty, twenty-five. 30, 35, 40, 45, 50, skip counting by five. Let's do the numbers rumba. Let's do the numbers rumba. Let's do the numbers rumba. Numbers, numbers all day long. Let's look at the date for today. It's Monday, May 10. 10, May the 10th. But I'm also putting, I did put the zebras up all the way to number 10. And the zebras are there because so many animals are being born at the zoo right now. So I chose to do zebras. However, I also want to talk about ordinal numbers. We talked about this a little bit last week. What are the sequence, what is, is rather, the sequence of numbers? We know that when we're counting, we say 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, etc., etc. But what is the order of those numbers? It's called an ordinal number. And, and for example, if you're lining up in the hall to go to the school bus, the first person lines up, then the second, then the third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh. I add a TH to my word. Eighth, ninth, and tenth. Those are ordinal numbers. So today we say it's Monday, May 10th. Or for example, sometimes if you're going to a track meet. We often go to a track meet in June. Someone comes in first in the race. Someone comes in second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth, ninth, tenth. Those are ordinal numbers. And often when we're talking about the calendar, instead of saying it's Monday, May 10, we would say it's Monday, May 10. 10th. Okay, so that's where when we use ordinal numbers. <clears throat> um, oh, I want to do a couple of zoo songs because so many animals are being born right now at the zoo. So I thought, oh heck, let's do a few zoo songs. Mama's taking us to the zoo tomorrow. Zoo tomorrow. Zoo tomorrow, Mama's taking us to the zoo 
tomorrow we can stay all day we're going to the zoo 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 how about you 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 can come to 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 we're going to the zoo 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 well we can't actually go to the zoo right now because it's closed but you can certainly be looking at animals online you can be looking at YouTube videos of zoo animals and particularly zoo baby animals being born. It's beautiful right now. Or you could look at a book. We have lots in our class and hopefully at your house. We have lots of books about animals. Look at this one. This is the, called The Big Atlas of Animals. Oh, look. Let's have a look at these pictures of animals here's some of the kinds that we see like some squirrels a mouse an owl a deer we see a lot of these in Canada here's something around my house robins a hedgehog another deer a hare. Look at bees. This is happening a lot right now. Bumblebees are making their hive. Oh, look. Wow. These are some animals that you might see in Australia or New Zealand. You might see a koala bear, an ostrich, a kangaroo. A cockatoo bird, so pretty. These are really wonderful. I even see butterflies flying around here. So as well as we having butterflies here in Canada, it looks like they also have them in Australia. Oh, the next picture are what we call the Americas, like South, uh, let's say South America, like like a jungle isn't it all these gorgeous plants and animals like a macaw this beautiful bird with all the colors it's called a macaw a hummingbird well we have hummingbirds here in Canada also so pretty a monkey a toucan bird another very colorful one Oh, look at this sloth hanging from the tree. These are some of the things we would see if we were going to the zoo. But um, another time we'll be going on a trip to the zoo. We'll all get on the school bus and we'll go to the zoo together. Now these are some animals we often see at the zoo. These are African animals. A giraffe, an elephant, a lion, a chimpanzee, beautiful, zebras, gazelle, hippopotamus. A hippo likes to be near the water. The giraffe, look at this long, long neck on a giraffe. Isn't that interesting? And the lion, they often call a lion a lazy animal because it just likes to lay around a lot of the time. <clears throat> and a crocodile. Oh, wow. Here's some beautiful animals of Asia. A giant panda. A fingfisher, uh, a kingfisher bird. Beautiful peacock. I know they have one of these out at our Toronto Zoo. A pheasant. Monkeys. So beautiful. All these beautiful animals and plants too. Oh, look. Up at the Arctic. I often sing about the Arctic where it's permanently frozen up there with ice floats. 
a seal, and a polar bear. Penguins are at the South Pole. A walrus. Beautiful animals. Well, like I say, we can't go to the zoo right now. But you could look at them on a YouTube video and see lots of animals. So this I want to sing to you about animals have coverings. That means all animals have a different covering. I have skin on, on me as a human being. I have skin. A bear has fur. A bird has feathers. A turtle has a hard shell. And fish have scales. Those are four different types of coverings. So this is to the tune of Mary Had a Little Lamb. Animals have coverings, coverings, coverings. Animals have coverings to help them to survive. Yes, each animal has feathers, or rather feathers or fur or a shell or scales to keep them alive and help them to survive, to protect their body. Bears have lots of thick, soft fur, thick, soft fur, thick, soft fur. Bears have lots of thick, soft fur to keep them safe and warm. Birds have feathers all around, all around, mm -hmm. all around. Birds have feathers all around just to help them fly. Turtles have hard shells on their back, shells on their back, shells on their back. Turtles have hard shells on their back. They like to call it home. We're going to be talking about turtles this month when it's World Turtle Day. Fish are covered in shiny scales, shiny scales, shiny scales. Fish are covered in shiny scales just to help them swim. So that's cool that animals have different coverings. Swimming, swimming in my swimming pool. When days are hot, when days are cold in my swimming pool. Breast stroke, side stroke, fancy diving too. Oh, don't you wish you never had anything else to do? <clears throat> Here's another animal type story or song about five monkeys hanging in a tree and down below is an alligator. Five little monkeys swinging in a tree Teasing Mr. Alligator, you can't catch me. Along comes Mr. Alligator, quiet as can be, and snapped a monkey right out of the tree. So there were five, one, two, three, four, five, and one got snapped, and now there are four. Four little monkeys swinging in a tree. Teasing Mr. Alligator, you can't catch me. Along came Mr. Alligator, quiet as can be, and snapped a monkey right out of the tree. Now we have one, two, three monkeys left. Three little monkeys swinging in the tree. Teasing Mr. Alligator, you can't catch me. Along came Mr. Alligator, quiet as can be, and snap a monkey right out of the tree. Two little monkeys swinging in a tree. Along came Mr. Alligator, quiet as can be. The alligator snapped a monkey right out of the tree. Then there was only one little monkey swinging in the tree. Teasing Mr. Alligator, you can't catch me. Along came Mr. Alligator, quiet as can be, and snap that monkey right out of the tree. And then there were none. 
<clears throat> Here's a zoo, a zoo poem. One, two, zoo. One, one. The zoo is lots of fun. Two, two. See a kangaroo. Three, three. See a chimpanzee. Four, four. Hear the lion roar. Five, five. Watch the seals dive. Six, six. There's monkey doing tricks. Woo, 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 swinging in the trees. Seven, seven. Count the elephants eleven. Eight, eight. A tiger and his mate. Nine, nine. Penguins in a line. Ten, ten. I want to come again. So there were nine penguins in a line. Nine. First, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth, ninth. They all have an, a place an order in their order. Okay. Um, let's sing about a, a farm song because I also like farms as well as zoos. <laughs> we're on our way. We're on our way. On our way to Grandpa's farm. We're on our way. We're on our way. On our way to Grandpa's farm. Down on Grandpa's farm there is a big pink pig. Down on Grandpa's farm there is a big pink pig. That pig he makes a sound like this, oink, oink. That pig, he makes a sound like this, oink, oink. We're on our way, we're on our way, on our way to Grandpa's farm. We're on our way, we're on our way, on our way to Grandpa's farm. I'm going to do the sign for dog. Down on Grandpa's farm, there is a big brown dog. Down on Grandpa's farm, there is a big brown dog. That dog, he makes a sound like this. Arr, arr. That dog, he makes a sound like this. Arr, arr. We're on our way. We're on our way. On our way to Grandpa's farm. We're on our way. We're on our way. On our way to Grandpa's farm. How about a cat? Down on Grandpa's farm, there is a big white cat. Down on Grandpa's farm, there is a big white cat. That cat, he makes a sound like this. Meow. That sound, he makes a sound like this. Meow. We're on our way. We're on our way. On our way to Grandpa's farm. We're on our way. We're on our way. On our way to Grandpa's farm. How about sheep? Sheep. Down on Grandpa's farm, there is a big, a uh, white, a white sheep. Down on Grandpa's farm, there is a big white sheep. The sheep make a sound like this. Bah! That sheep make a sound like this. Bah! We're on our way. We're on our way. On our way to Grandpa's farm. We're on our way. We're on our way, on our way to Grandpa's farm. It is fun going to a farm, going to a zoo. How about you? You can come too. When we get back to our normal, back in class, we'll go on trips again to farms and zoos, museums and Ripley's Aquarium and the Science Center, which we really enjoy going to. Red and yellow and pink and green. Purple and orange and blue. I can sing a rainbow. Sing a rainbow. Sing a rainbow tune. Let's do it one more time with the colors. Red and yellow and pink and green. Purple, my favorite, and orange. And 
blue. I can sing a rainbow, sing a rainbow, sing a rainbow tune. Fantastic. That's a, such a pretty song. All about the colors of a rainbow. All things on earth shall pass under the sky, but music alone shall live. Music alone shall live. Music alone shall live and never die. Beautiful. I love music. Fill your day with music, my friends. It's a great calming activity, or if you're not so much that you don't want to calm down, you may also want to get up and dance a little bit. Dance, listen to music, or listen to some quiet music and meditate, calm yourself down. Sing, clap, move, stretch, stretch, stretch. I don't think I did much stretching with you today. Let's do one stretching song. How about it's a little bit up and a little bit down, a little bit up and a little bit down, a little bit up and a little bit down. And that's what makes the world go round. Let's go a little faster. It's a little bit up and a little bit down, a little bit up and a little bit down, a little bit up and a little bit down. And that's what makes the world go round. I want to try it even faster, my friends. It's a little bit up and a little bit down, a little bit up and a little bit down, a little bit up and a little bit down. And that's what makes the world go round. Good for you. Following the up and down song. Excuse me, but sometimes I just need to drink from my water uh, canister. So talking about up and down. Up and down are opposites. They're prepositions. Prepositions is when we're talking about opposites that have to do with direction, like up and down, in and out. Put it in my hand, take it out. On my hand, off. Those are directions or prepositions. On, off. How about over my arm, under over, under, in front of me, behind, in front, behind, above, below, down here, above, below. Those are some opposites that are also directions. They tell us a direction to go in. However, there's also opposites that are not so much directions like hot and cold, hard and soft, inside, outside, sun, moon. Lots of opposites that we see around us. I want to circle back to numbers. I found an activity that you can be doing at your house. Most families have a deck of cards and in fact if you don't have one even at the dollar store you can buy a deck of cards. They're not too expensive and I got thinking well what are some of the things that you can do with a deck of cards on your own? You can sort them by color. So you can put all the red ones in one pile and all the black ones in one pile. Or you can sort them by numbers. So here I've got all the number sevens together. And here I've got all the number 
tens together. Or you can sort them by shape. You can put all the diamonds together. You could put all the hearts together in a pile. You could put all the clubs together in a pile. So you could sort them by shape. And this, my friend, you can do with your cards. You can also make a sequence, the order. First, number two, second, number three, number four, and number five. That's a sequence. So you could put your playing cards into a sequence of first, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth. It's your choice. And the last one is, so these are things you could be doing at your house with playing cards. You could be sorting your playing cards and you can also use playing cards for matching. So for example, you could have the cards laying down on the table and you have to find two cards that match. Lift them up. It's a memory game and try to find two that match. Two number sixes, two number fives. So that's one activity you can do at your house with numbers. I'm gonna show you one more, but first I'm going to show you my sensory box today. Today, my sensory box, which is a rectangle, it has something hard in it. Something from my kitchen. It's something we cook often for supper or sometimes for lunch if you're making macaroni and cheese. It's macaroni. This is called elbow macaroni. It's so tiny here, it's hard to show you. It's called elbow macaroni. I guess it kind of looks like an elbow <laughs> of your body. And with this macaroni, first of all, you can just have fun playing with the macaroni, squishing it in your hand. You can practice lifting it up and pouring it with a cup and pour it into another cup. You can practice pouring. And each of you have a set of tongs now. I think I gave them to you last year. And you can practice picking up the elbow macaroni and put it in, pick it up, put it in, pick it up, put it in. Practice putting in, in an egg carton using your tongs. Another thing you could do is I've got some cups here that I put numbers on. Number one, number two. You could go all the way to, let's say, number 10. I've got one, I've got two, I've got number three, I've got number four and number five. And your job would be to fill the cup with the correct number of elbow macaroni. So I've got number five, so I put one, two, three, four, five in. Or if it's number four, I put my hand back in the elbow macaroni. One, two, three, four. It's good to practice counting with the number that's written on it. So for example, number three. One, two, three. Someday you might work somewhere where you have to count things. Your boss might ask you to count something. So you wanna know what that looks like. Or for example, maybe if you work on a farm, one of my sons works on a farm. So he might put 12 eggs into a basket or 12 eggs, I should say, into the egg carton. You might be putting 12 bagels into a bag for someone at a, at a bakery or 12 croissants or 12 buns. Maybe your 
working at Tim Hortons and you have to learn how to pick up with the tongs and pick up 12 donuts and put them in a box. The tongs are handy. Now, to, come to think of it, if you worked at Tim Hortons, you would probably be wearing plastic gloves to count 12 donuts to put in the box. But that was a nice entry point into something else I want to talk about today. These are called kitchen rules. Things that are important when you're working at your home in your kitchen or if you're working out in the community at a restaurant, at um, a donut shop, or maybe you're working in the food court at the mall. Actually, anywhere you work, the number one job is to wash your hands. And you're probably going to see a sign like this at your work. First, you get your hands wet. Then you put the soap on and you really lather up that soap. You can count, I think counting to 20. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. 20 minutes of really scrubbing the soap into your hands. Then you rinse it off with the water. Rinse it, rinse it, rinse it, and you dry it. If you're at work, there's chances are you're going to have paper towel to rinse it with. Sometimes they have air blowers, so you put your hands under the air blower to dry. Make sure your hands are really dry before you go back to work, or be, if you're working in your kitchen at your house, make sure your hands are dry before you start to cook. So the number one rule is having your hands clean for cooking or for your job. The second rule about having a job, be it in your own kitchen, your own house, or if you go to a job, you're probably going to see a sign like this, which says, cover your cough. If you have to cough, and it's natural, often people do, I often suggest to you, <coughs> to cough into your elbow <coughs> or perhaps cough into your hand but then you have to wash your hands um yeah and or if you have a kleenex handy and you're able to <coughs> cough or <coughs> sneeze into that kleenex then you put it in the garbage and you're most likely going to have to go and wash your hands again because the germs from coughing are probably on your hands so you're back to the hand washing stage okay so when you're at your work lots of hand washing and cover your cough <coughs> okay or if you're working in your own kitchen those are important rules. And I want everyone to be helping in your kitchen at your house. I think it's great to be cooking. You want to learn how to cook for yourself. But you also have to have those rules. Hand washing, cover your cough. And my own personal rule, a third rule is, you have to be aware of your mouth. Now, most of the time now we're wearing a mask. But there's going to come a day when we're not wearing masks anymore. And for example, I don't wear a mask in my kitchen. You won't wear a mask at your home or in your, in your kitchen. I want you to be aware of trying to close your mouth when you're cooking. Try to keep your mouth closed because if you're 
mixing something, if you're chopping something, if you're grating something, here's a kitchen grater. If you're grating cheese or cabbage, you don't want any of the germs or the spit from your mouth to go into the food. That's, that's not very nice and it's not very acceptable. So I try to, if I, let's say I'm cooking, making a cake. I keep my mouth closed. Or if I'm grating, this is a grater. We use this a lot in our classroom and I hope you're using it at home to grate cheese or to grate cabbage, sometimes to grate carrots. Um, but watch, I keep my mouth. I always suggest when you're at your house or in our classroom, you hold the grater with one hand because you don't want it moving around on the table. So you hold the grater with one hand and you scrape, scrape, scrape the cheese or the carrot or the cabbage from the top to the bottom. There's two opposites, top and bottom. Scrape down, scrape down. Go back to the top, scrape down, down. And you really, with a grater, you really want to be careful of your fingers that you're not scratching along these because they're really sharp. I wish I had a piece of fruit or vegetable rather in here. I don't. I, I should, should have brought a carrot with me. Perhaps tomorrow we'll grate a carrot and I'll show you that I try to keep my fingers at a distance. And, okay, so that's a good kitchen rule. Keep your mouth closed when you're around the food. Or let's say you're at the stove cooking, keep your mouth closed, okay? Another good um, kitchen rule is to wear an apron. Now, I didn't bring one here today, so I think the rest of the kitchen rules we'll talk about tomorrow when I have these things around to show you, okay? But we did talk about the three really important ones. Wash your hands, cover your cough, <clears throat> close your mouth. Talking about cooking, my friends. <coughs> Today, I was showing you elbow macaroni in your sensory box. I think all of you should be cooking macaroni or pasta at your house because it's the easiest thing to cook. First, you're going to get your pot and you're going to fill it probably about halfway up the pot. So this is halfway up the pot. You fill it with water and a little bit of salt if you want, a little bit of oil some people put in. And you put it on your stove. And for, for getting water to boil, you have to turn the stove on to high. It has to be on the highest heat in order to boil. If you just turn it to low, it will never boil. If you turn it to medium, it will never boil. It has to be on, the knob has to be on high, the highest part of your um, cooking option in order for water to boil. And I usually put a lid on or I put it on halfway. It's your choice, not all people do. Some people just leave it without a lid and you'll see the steam coming up and you'll start to see if you look in the pot with my mouth closed I could see the water starting to bubble 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 that's when I know it's boiling and it's time to pour in my pasta my macaroni 
and macaroni is a dry product. So we don't use a glass measuring cup. We use a metal. For any dry products, you use a metal measuring cup. And pasta is metal. Pasta is a dry product. So I pour my pasta in. There we go. Well, it would be in with water. And I stir it a little bit. And then I do turn down, some people keep it going at high. I turn it down a little bit so that the pasta water doesn't flow over the pot. And pasta doesn't, macaroni um, and pasta do not take long to cook. You have to keep checking it about, about five minutes, I guess, it's cooked. Five to seven minutes. And when it's cooked, you might want to test it with a spoon. You get a spoon and you might want to try tasting one. And then I get another kitchen product. This one is called a, um, oh my goodness, my memories, a strainer. I have this type of strainer and I would go to my kitchen counter where I have my sink and I would pour the pasta into the strainer and I would drain all the water out. Drain, drain, drain the water out. And then you're ready to add your past, your macaroni back to the pot. You can add some sauce. But those are a few things about the kitchen. You saw the grater for grating cheese, carrots, cabbage, beets. You saw a strainer, and I use that for straining the pasta. Of course, your pot for cooking in. And your metal measuring cup for measuring dry products. Now, earlier today I sang the number, the numbers rumba. Tonight, your homework, it's in your homework package, are to do two number counting sheets. So look in your math package, count the objects and put the number. And this one, you match the objects with the number. Two math sheets tonight, my friends. And in your package, there are some pages that are just for you to color whenever you wish. It's your choice. Coloring is a great activity to calm you down. So for example, there's some beautiful butterfly pictures in your package. And right now all the butterflies are turning, uh, the, the um, caterpillars are turning into chrysalis and the chrysalis, the pupa, will open up and the butterfly will come out. So these activities you could do at your house on your own time, whenever you feel like coloring. You have another butterfly picture you can color. Oh, here's a fun one. Another butterfly picture. Or you may wish to color this beautiful flower picture with a butterfly on top. It's your choice. The coloring pages are for you. Whenever you wish to have a little time to yourself. I think there's also one here of a robin and I have to tell you a story about a robin at my house. We have lots of robins in our big property on our property and they like to make their nest on my husband's ladders. So he has all the ladders stacked up against one of our, um, uh, it's not a barn, I guess you would call it a, I'm gonna call it a garage, a shed. He's got all his ladders lined up. Well, the robins have put a nest on each ladder and some of them have a nest on a few of the rungs of the ladder, the steps. So 
Now it's hard for him to take one of those ladders away because he would have to move the nest. You cannot move a nest. If you move the nest, the eggs will get disturbed and they may not hatch for the little robins. So that's the story right now is we just have to leave all the robin nests on the ladder until they hatch and fly away. So those are your coloring sheets. Now, something else we've been talking about in the month of May are various shapes. Triangle, rectangle, square, rhombus, or a diamond, an oval, like an egg, and of course, a circle. Well, I was also telling you that out in our community, you will often see these shapes. And I'll show you what I mean. For example, here is a, well, here's two things, a circle and a crisscross, an X. This big circle means RR, railway. There's a railway there, so you have to be really careful if you see this sign. This one is a circle. Here's one that is a rhombus or a diamond. It says, use the crosswalk. So that's where you see a diamond or a rhombus when you're out and about. Here's a rectangle. This one says pull. So if you're pulling a door, here's a rectangle. Another rectangle. Good for you, reading. Open. The store is open. But you can see the rectangle. Shapes are all around us, my friends. Oh, here's an interesting one. This has a couple of shapes because I see a little bit of a triangle and a little bit of a rectangle in the middle. This is for stairs. Or sometimes you see an arrow for this way. I see the triangle at the end of it. Go this way. Here's an oval. It goes around, oval, and it says, danger. There's gonna be cars here, or danger, poison. Whenever you see this sign, stay away from it. It's poison. Let me find another shape. Here's a rectangle. This one says, quiet. You might see this at the movie theater. Somewhere where you have to sit quietly. Oh, look at this shape. A stop sign. Here's another popular one, a rectangle for don't walk. Shapes are all around us, my friends. You're going to see them all the time. Let me see if I can find another one. Here's another rectangle for out. If you go in one door, you go out another door and here's another popular one a rectangle for exit when you want to know where to go to get out of a building or a, out of the school it says exit so i want to circle back to some of our shapes to do some of our breathing breathe like a heart breathe 
fold it in and out. Let's try another one, a circle. Breathe it in. Let's try a rhombus or a diamond. Breathe it in. Hold it. Hold it. And blow it out. Let's try a square. Breathe it in. Hold it. Hold it. And blow it out. Good for you. Let's try triangle, three sides. Breathe it in, hold it, and blow it out. And a rectangle. Breathe it in, hold it, hold it, and blow it out. Good for you. That breathing always helps me to just calm down a little bit. So I want to circle back to some of the art we did last week. This month I'm going to try to introduce us to different artists. So the first artist we did was Kandinsky and he taught us how to make paintings with Circles inside of circles inside of circles. That's really cool. It was a wonderful Russian painter, Kandinsky. And the next painter we did was a Dutch painter named Vincent van Gogh. And he was always interesting because he did a beautiful painting of Starry Night he always loved painting with sunflowers. And mo many artists love to make a painting about themselves, don't they? So here's one of Vincent van Gogh, wonderful Dutch painter. Another painting we did last week was a drawing, Pablo Picasso, and he's from Spain. And he introduced an idea called cubism and working with different geometric shapes. Talking about shapes again. Circles and triangles and hearts. And his art is interesting because the eye doesn't have to be exactly the same. The ears don't have to be exactly the same. Everything can be a little bit different. So that's okay in art. We can make it our own and make it different. Here's another artist we learned about last week, Henri Matisse. He's a French artist, and he also worked with different shapes, spirals and triangles and circles and rhombus and square and big rectangle. Interesting how shapes come into art a lot. This artist, Paul Clay, he was Swiss and German, and he really used shapes a lot. Remember last week, we did a painting like this. He used triangles and rectangles and squares and circles. It's fun to work with shapes, isn't it? Well, the artist I want to introduce you to today, oh, look at her beautiful painting. Her name is Frida Kalu, or Kalo, and she's from Mexico. Ole! She's from Mexico. Ooh, let me get my little maraca, a Mexican maraca. And here's a picture of Frida. They often call her just by her first name, Frida. She actually had a hard life when she was young because 
she had polio, which was an ailment to her body that made her body very weak and sore in the legs. And she walked with a limp. And then unfortunately, she was in a car accident. She had a very bad accident that caused her body to be in a lot of pain. But when she would lay in bed in pain, because that's what you have to do sometimes, she took up the art of painting. And she painted with beautiful colors. And she often painted a picture of her own face. And so beautiful Frida, she would paint a gorgeous picture of her face. I see she's also put some animals in her picture or some flowers and trees and in some of her paintings she's got lots of bright colors and she often has flowers in her hair for her me beautiful Mexican pictures. So today we're going to try drawing a Frida picture. I found this picture. And I want to try to draw a Frida, but I want to remind you that when we draw or when we paint, it's our own creation, okay? It doesn't have to look exactly like Frida's. It's just going to be our own creation. But in this picture, they started by dividing it into four sections. One, two, three, Four. So I'm going to start by making a line down my page and across. Let me get my pen and paper and I'll show you what I mean. Here we go. First with a very light pencil, I'm going to go down my page and I'm going to go across, across. So I made one, two, three, four sections. And you, you can practice doing that too. You can make four sections. And now I'm just going to try to copy what I see in her picture. And I'll show you what I mean. This is going to be a little tricky online. I see that she made sort of a triangle triangle for her head for the top of her head so I'm going to start by making that triangle here we go we're all a little bit like artists aren't we but we make it our own and then I'm going to go do down and around and make an oval face I'm going to put on two ears. So I tried to, to make the triangle part, ears, the oval. Then I'm going to go down like a rectangle to make her neck. And then I'm going to add some circles, circles, circles for her beautiful necklace. Miss Goldsman loves to wear jewelry and it looks like Frida like to wear jewelry also and then she has a circle going around her head for her beautiful hair and she also has beautiful circles 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 and these are for flowers she loved having flowers in her hair. So that's the beginning of my Frida picture. And you could try doing a Frida also, or you could do your own face if you wish. We always do portraits in class. For today, that's all I'm going to do. I'm gonna copy, I'm just copying what I see on this Frida chart. I'm actually going to add a few more flowers, circles, circles, circles. Now let me go back to my Frida picture. 
perhaps I should add the eyes. So I'm going to add one, two eyes. two eyes I make them sort of like an oval I'm, the eye is sort of like an oval oval and the circle in the middle the pupil of your eye is a circle then she liked to have big big Black, 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 black semicircles for her eyebrows. There we go. So I've got her eyes. Oh, now I'm at the nose. I'm not always great at making noses, but I'm going to try. Pretty big nose, <laughs> but that's okay. I'm making it my own, my friends. And the last part is her mouth. I make the upper lip and the lower lip. The upper lip, I'm gonna go over it again. And the lower lip is like a, a semicircle. You can see that shapes, shapes, Shapes are in a lot of art. Circles and rectangles. More circles. So we'll continue with that tomorrow. And that's a Frida painting or picture. Perhaps tomorrow we'll color it in with paints. Frida is so beautiful from Mexico. And I want to circle back to one more thing before we go for the day. But I'll see you online this afternoon. Who lives here? Who lives in this cage? It's a beautiful bird. This is a, a parakeet. Who lives in this bowl? A goldfish. Who is in this basket? A cat. Who, you know, who stays in this house? A dog. Good for you. Who is in this cage? It's a hamster. Could be a mouse. Some people have a mouse. Some people have a rat, a guinea pig. But this one is a hamster. And here's some beautiful colors of animals. A beautiful duckling is yellow. A macaw bird is red. Good for you. Tropical fish. In June, we're going to be talking about ocean fish. Tropical fish is blue. Good for you. A gecko. A gecko, it looks like a little lizard, is green. A fox. Now, often a fox is sort of a red color, but this fox is more of an orange color. A piglet is pink. Good for you. An otter, I otter know. An otter that lives near the water is brown. An otter so often will slide down the side of a river bank. An otter will slide down the, the, the um, side of the riverbank and into the water. 
A polar bear lives way up in the north where it's permanently icy is white. And ants crawling on the ground, crawling in the garden, are black. Let me see what else we have. I want to skip ahead. Oh, wow. I, I, I want to skip ahead to this because I love seeing these zoo-type animals. A lioness. Meerkats. They're so cute, aren't they? A giraffe with its long neck. A hyena. I wonder if it really does laugh. A laughing hyena. An antelope. They have these out at the Toronto Zoo. An elephant. A rhinoceros. And an ostrich. Beautiful pictures. And the last page I'm going to show you are some patterns. Look at these patterns. I see some circles. I see some rhombus or diamond shape. I see some stripes that are in the shape of a rectangle. I see some a little tiny circles. So first, let's look at this black and white stripe. What animal is that? I think it's on my calendar. I'm gonna guess it's a zebra. Correct. And this is a brown, it's hard to see it on the video. It's a brown and it has a shape on it. And this animal has a hard shell that it lives in. It's a tortoise. This time I see stripes of black and yellow. What do you think it is? A bumblebee. We need those bumblebees. Don't kill them. We need lots of bumblebees to make flowers and vegetables and fruits grow. Dots, dots, dots on a red back. It's a ladybug. Now this one is black with a big white stripe. Let's see what that is. Oh, it's a panda bear. Well, this is interesting. It's kind of a zigzaggy pink. I don't even know what that is. It's a pink flamingo. Beautiful. Now here's the diamond or rhombus shape in a green color. It's the skin of a snake. Now I see orange and black. I think you know what this is. A tiger. And now I see little circles, circles, circles on green feathers. I think I know what it is. It's a peacock. It's just another example of how shapes are all around us, my friends. You're going to see them everywhere. Friends, I will remember you. I'll think of you. I'll play with you. And when another day is through, I'll still be friends with you. Goodbye, friends. Have a great day. Get outside today. Get out for a walk or a bike ride or a skateboarding, play basketball, go to the park. Just don't get too close to anyone. Keep your social distance. Goodbye, friends.